Good morning, afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. And uh, welcome back. It's been a fortnight. It has. This is Needles at the Ready. This is a knitting and fiber channel on YouTube. Sure oh, is. Oh, wait. What? Say that again. This Sure is. is? No, what you said before. This is Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. I'm Ray. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening? Welcome. Wow, I was like really impressed with our opening. <laughs> I am i don't care. Do you want to say who you are again? No, I already said. Okay. Did you all pay attention? I hope There'll be a quiz. Um, so yes, Needles at the Ready. That's We us. are a YouTube, a knitting fiber related YouTube channel. We are. We are coming to you guys from Stratford, Connecticut, where we live together with our dog Tarquin, That's who's right. downstairs sleeping in the window. He is. And today is Saturday, March 20th. It is the I first day believe. of spring. Is it officially? Did you look that up? Or I believe are you saying the wrong things? Um, Jen posted it on Facebook, so it's got to so be true. So it must be true. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Right. Facebook um, is, is truth. So that's, Hashtag truth. That's nice. We're going to have like 55 degree weather today and I tomorrow. Know. So that's lovely. I'm so excited. I know. Me too. I'm excited for the warmer weather to be able to like go and see people in an outdoor environment yes. and enjoy. Or just some sit company. outside. Yes, yeah, sit outside. I just want to sit sure. outside. Get some sun. Yeah. Like extended sunlight. And yeah, that would be Speaking nice. of extended sunlight, we had daylight savings and that's some crap. Let it me tell you. It was an extended, exhausted oh, week. It I couldn't. Screwed it up. I know. A lot of people have said that, you know, it, um, it's not that big a deal or like it one is. or two days, like you're fine. Yeah. The whole week. I slept for nine and a half hours last night. I think it took me until to get up. Thursday to catch up. Really? To like be okay. Yeah, same. To feel awake I know. during the day. I know. Um, Agreed. So yeah. So now that we got that out of our system, thanks everybody for uh, checking us out. Totally. And coming back. Yeah. Thanks for all your night. new subscribers and new viewers. It's really nice to meet you all. Thank yes. you for joining us. And for all of you old timers, thanks for coming back. We really appreciate it. We love seeing... I love seeing like the comments um, of people that, you know, have been with us from the beginning and you kind of get to know them and it's really kind of cool. So what's really fun now, and it's funny because people mention it quite a bit, is in prior episode, like let's go back maybe episode one, two, three ish. We had talked about whether or not people would binge like us yeah. ever. So it's really funny to get comments now from people that are binging the old episodes. Like old episodes. Because I'm like, I don't know what we talked right. about. But they say something and it jogs my memory. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I totally remember that. One of them, I just replied to one of the comments yesterday too. And I don't remember what it was, but they they like mentioned something and it totally made me chuckle because I remember that happened. Oh, somebody had mentioned, do you remember the hat fiasco episode where I couldn't wear the hat correctly? Yes. Yeah. Some Maybe that like, was it. Maybe. Um, but um, yeah, no. So thank you I've guys. I've come a long way. I know how to wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we appreciate it. Um, you guys yeah, coming totally back and, Absolutely. you know, the subscribing, the comments, the thumbs up, the thumbs downs, whatever. The Just the interaction Insta- is nice. Yeah. The Instagram interaction and yeah. the Ravelry, which we are really bad at. So totally. I'm Although so I'm going to, I'm going to commit this weekend. Okay. Good for yeah. you. I'm going to put all my projects up there, and I'm going to add some notes. Wow. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. I say um, that now. Um, we actually have a little I put bit it out into the universe, so of a busy-ish weekend. We do, but it's good busy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like, it'll be good uh, busy. A podcast weekend is typically a, a pretty busy weekend with, mm-hmm. you know, we don't edit. So the filming and then the making sure it gets up and then just, you know, posting stuff and then replying to things. So it's, it yeah. tends to be a – and then clean up afterwards. Yeah, clean up. Sometimes it doesn't happen the same day. No, sometimes it does no. not. No. Um, but so that's yeah. okay. So we have – what have we done the past couple of weeks? Or do we want – is that how we – yeah, let's do that. Do you all want to hear about what we've done or – or no, no, I didn't know if normally we do admin. I don't know what we normally do, so we're just. I don't know do the so. admin thing. We just kind of started, so no, we haven't. Yeah, like Welcome. past couple of episodes. No, you're such a liar. Welcome to the poop show, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, what have we been up to the last couple of weeks? So last after last podcast that evening, actually, um, my brother and our sister in law came over with our niece and That's nephew for right. our like monthly dinner that we just started up again. I don't remember when. I want to see. Maybe just this January. Is, this is the second time that it's happened. Oh, you're since, correct. So February. COVID. I went over there once yeah. um, in February. They came over here in March. We yep. made lasagna mm-hmm. and oh my God, it was so good. chocolate chip cookies. Yep. And it was just a nice night hanging out, chatting. Um, 
yeah, we just had a, it was just nice to, to have them here and it was really cute. So, um, our niece is five and she just like chopped off all her hair. So it's like oh shoulder God. length and adorable. So um, and my nephew, he's just getting so tall. I think yeah. he's going to, he'll probably be like my brother's height, if not a little bit taller. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. It was nice. And then that following day, no, that was pretty much that, that weekend. I don't know that we did much else other no. than that. We went to Ikea last weekend. We did. So we had the intention of getting some new cushions for our outdoor furniture. furniture. And we have on our deck, we have the, we got it from Ikea a couple of years ago. Um, really nice set. I can't remember the name of it. No, um, I, it's too hard to pronounce Ikea it is. most of the time. But um, we got <clears throat> like white cushions. Stupid. Poor choice. Don't do it, guys. Don't yeah. ever do it. Especially with a dog that decided that that those are now his like beds. Especially when the sun is like shining. Yeah. And um, so anyway, so it's it we're due to replace the cushions um and the like the outer fabric cushion sleeves. What are they called? Pillowcases, cushion cases, fabric. And uh, we went there with that intention, and we struggled. We couldn't find really what we were looking for. So. Yeah, this Ikea trip was... Like, there's two types of Ikea trips. <gasps> oh, no, I forgot to bring... S- oh, that's... You should go get stuff. it. I don't know where it is. It's on the chair in the dining room. Is it? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Can you talk to them yeah. without me? Okay, BRB. So there's two types of Ikea trips. There's the one where you go fully prepared and you know what you're getting, and it's kind of like a quick one. Like, oh, I just need to run in and get this. Then there's that other one where you go prepared, you know what you want, and then you go completely off track. And you buy everything else except what you need. And that's kind of what we did. We did not leave without with any cushions or any new covers for the cushions that we have. We came home with everything else. We got I got some stuff for dyeing because it's inexpensive. And um, they're really nice measuring cups. Um, they're glass. They look like kind of like sign speakers. So I got a few of those. Got some stuff for speckling. And then we just got like... A new area rug. We got some of the IKEA, their classic blue bags, because they're great for grocery shopping and laundry, like bringing it up and down, because we have to go from our second floor down to our basement to do laundry. So it's good for that and just like carrying stuff. So, and now they have a bunch of different sizes. They have like a super small, a medium, a large, and I think an extra large. Um, We also, I don't know what else, like we just went and got everything that we didn't need is what we got. Totally. Yeah, and we got cinnamon buns. Did you cinnamon buns are delicious from there. Oh my god, we Love ate them, them in the parking lot. I no, I like not we even opened them in the park. Not warmed up, not even yeah. in the parking lot. I ate them on the highway on the way home. Oh yeah, I ate mine in the parking lot. Oh no, we yeah, um, I started in the parking lot. So what else with? So we did the IKEA thing. Yep, um, we went to Christmas tree shop to get our pot, our coffee pods because they're a lot cheaper there. We get the um, what's the name of it? Victor Allen. Victor Allen brand. They're yep. really good. It's like twenty dollars for like eighty coffee yeah. pods which is a really good price um we worked you did school because <sighs> yeah. you're you're still in school you have a couple you should be about midterm time ish right you're about halfway through the mm-hmm. semester yep um the weather's like been kind of nicer so it's good because i've been able to take the dog for walks on my lunch break yeah and i've been taking him in the evening so he's been getting two walks a day which is really nice yeah yeah um, we didn't have any snow but yeah i kind of i guess that's really it like we did the dinner and then the Ikea trip. Those were like our big things mm-hmm. for the past two weeks. It's just um, nice to get out of the house. Yeah. Although we went and then we went grocery shopping. I forgot what day. Maybe it was the Ikea day. It was. And somebody had walked in the store without a mask, mask on. I didn't and I was like, realize you did as we were leaving. They were coming out. It was very awkward. Yeah. Yeah, it was very awkward. Yeah. We have to, we're still under a mask. Yeah, we or, have to wear masks. Mask. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's kind of been our two weeks. Yeah, let's talk. Um, let's talk about some admin stuff. Admin now. Admin. Let's do the ad administration. Okay. So first up, we have some coupon codes. We for do. You guys. These are very exciting. We have a brand new one too. So first up is the lovely Naughty Knitting Sacks. We have a coupon code for fifteen percent off your purchase. We do. The code is Prickle Pants fifteen. Um, then we have a coupon code. From Nancy for Trilogy Yarn. 15% off your purchase, which excludes any of her clubs. Good. And that coupon code is NATR15. Yep. And then the brand new one, which is super exciting and we really appreciate it. We so appreciate this. And I think you guys will appreciate this as well so much. 
So we have a new one from Knit Swag. We do. This is an ongoing uh, coupon code, so there's no expiration on it. This is, it is Kevin and Ray. That's it. Kevin and Ray. And it gets you 15% off your purchase. This yep. is where we bought these lovely mugs. And these have become our absolute favorite mugs. Yes. We, we also got the St. Patrick's Day, or the Shamrock ones. Yep. Um, and we were using those until just the other day, which yes. I guess we can still use them. It doesn't matter. I know. We don't have yeah. to put them away. Totally not. When the luck are, of the Irish. Are... I'm Irish. I could use it whenever I want. You don't know what you are because you still have that ancestral Let's real roll kit. I do know I'm Irish. You need to spit in the cup. It's like I did not just do. spit in a cup. No, but you need to. Um, or do so something. I don't know what you have to do. Our coupon codes. Yes. So check out their shops. We will have the links below. We will have the codes below. So cool beans. We love those. Yeah, totally Please. take advantage of that. And it's yeah. nice, you know, it's good for the shops, I think, too, to know where their customers are coming from. You know, I think yeah. they appreciate that. For sure. Mm, so that's good. Um, and Nancy then, just had a, a big trunk show, I think. She did. So that was seen in pretty successful. Portland area. Yeah. I know. I'm oh. so jealous because a couple of people from our Knit Nights were able, like, live in that area and were able to go and meet her. Yeah. And it was really cool to see the pictures and all of that. I know. Yeah. One day. I know. One day. Um, and then last little ad mini piece is we had mentioned, oh no, two things. I forgot about this one. I feel like you're very organized. I'm just here for the ride today, I think, ladies and gents. I, I've, I've got nothing. You're such a liar. You have more stuff knitting wise than I do. Maybe, but I don't, I don't have any, I'm usually pretty organized. Well, not really. Not organized, but in my head I'm organized. We have a uh, make along. H-I- we do have a oh, make-along. Oh, you forgot to write that down. So we have our spring yes. clean and make-along. and oh my gosh, you guys are already posting stuff, which is amazing. Um, so I'm going to do this on the fly because somebody had asked if it was only on Ravelry. And I always forget that some people aren't able to use Ravelry any longer. Yeah. So they want to know if we were doing it any place else. In it. So I'm thinking of doing a hashtag okay. to, on Instagram. So let's do um, a hashtag that's going to be spring. Let's do... Well, N A T R spring. Okay. Twenty one. Okay. Okay. So that's going to be the um. Spring How do I cleaning. search to see if it's available? Do N A T R. Well, hashtag right. Um. No, you could go tap on where it says tags. I have to teach them how to use technology, guys. So bear with me a moment. Spring. <laughs> then two one. Somebody's there. Somebody posts. <laughs> Somebody's. Oh, we, we have a post. We do. Somebody created it. Did okay, you? Okay. So, no, I totally didn't. I don't There's think two I did. of them. So we have two. <laughs> we have two hashtags. Thank, thank you. Um, Who's this? Julie. Julie did. Oh my gosh! And she's got a knit swag mug, mug. in the post. Julie, you are Julie, on top of it. You are. So let's use Julie's hashtag. Hashtag natr spring mal 2021. There we go. All Julie, right. I love it. And you've got cookies in there? At least some Ooh. people are on top of our podcast. This is the Birds of a Feather is by what Drea knitting. Renee Knits. Mm-hmm. And she's using Dragon Horde yarn. Oh, my God. Her with nuts. our mug. She is like... You people are you really are good amazing. at posting on And what's that media? bag, Julie? What's that bag you It looks like a Mrs. Brown's bag. It kind of does. There's. I know that there's another bag maker who has similar style bag yeah. as she does um so julie yes. i'm gonna follow you this is jewel we don't follow b makes so this um Hi. the idea behind this <gasps> she's a podcaster what okay i'm i'll set that aside let me whenever you're i'm ready are you ready to continue start? carry welcome on you needles at the right no, welcome <laughs> this is how we roll ladies um, and gents so the idea behind the spring cleaning mal is just to get rid of our whips yes. um Get some of them finished. It's running from the beginning of March to the end of May. Mm-hmm. So it gives yes. you three full months. Thank you for saying that because I had made a mistake when I put the post on uh, Ravelry. I put that the mail ends on March 31st. It no. does not. It is a three-month March, April, May. Yes. Spring time to do it. So we have a uh, chatter thread and an FO thread. Mm-hmm. We'll be pulling prizes from both or winners yep. from both. And now we'll use that hashtag, which we will include below, mm-hmm. and we will pull a winner from there as well. Yes. We have some cool prizes. We um, do. 
uh, I like don't know. Some more had just come in as well, which I think, I think we, we have, can probably use. Right. We have a bag. I think we still have some naughty knitting sacks that are available. Mm-hmm. I think we have some yarn. I may dye up some yarn for yeah, it. That'll so we're good. So exciting. Um, so that is the spring cleaning mal. Yeah. And then the other thing that we had mentioned in the previous episode is our men's knit night. Yeah. Which we've had an overwhelming response. I think we're oh up my to gosh. maybe about like 70 guys. I'm so humbled have. by that. I, um, I really didn't expect that. Yeah, it, it's going to be awesome. We're going to get yeah. all the details set up and hopefully emailed out tomorrow. Yep. Um, we did indeed have a form below in the previous episode. We think we're going to remove it from this one Yeah. just to see how it goes. Um, yeah, because I, I there's a cool feature for Zoom where you can do like breakout rooms. And I right. think it would be neat to kind of get everybody together in the beginning there's going to be a lot of people right. you know and just to say hellos and all of that stuff and maybe do some like breakout rooms and give everybody an opportunity to be in an uh uh like, smaller group. smaller group to have better conversation right you know and then we can kind of jump around and say hello to everybody and i think it'll be really exciting and if it works you know who knows we can right. try some other things as well with some other people um, yeah but it would be really neat to do it like once a month Yes, um, it, that's idea. The idea is once a month at the like probably last Saturday of the month. Yeah. Um, the time may vary so that people from different time zones, it's easier to manage. Uh, this one we plan on doing the last Saturday of March at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so we're going to get all the details like out. like next week. It is. <laughs> so we're going to get those details out um, probably tomorrow. Okay. Hopefully work, tomorrow. Work, 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 work. Uh, and then... Yeah, and I my idea is that with the breakout rooms that it's probably going to be about 25 people to room because Maybe. on our on our Thursday night knit nights that seems to work really well when we have that many of us or even on um Chip and Aaron's bingos like yeah, those 15 to 20 25, 25 is like a really good number manageable mm-hmm. and people don't end up talking over each other and all that stuff. So like I think that do. might be a good one. Are you talking over me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um so yeah, that's kind of the admin stuff so why don't we um that's fantastic get right into some knitting today we have um a couple fo's for you guys we do we have a couple whips um in a nay i know i was just thinking that in my head do you guys remember that the yeah. whip whip nay nay no it's not whip whip nay nay what is it called <laughs> isn't it it's to say the whip whip <laughs> nay nay <No. laughs> you know <laughs> oh lord no, it's let me see you whip and nay nay. Oh. Yeah. Remember we Remember did the, it at, Yes, we did. We did the Was it, it wasn't Memorial Day. No, it was just it one was of, just it was a, a girls' random. night, I think. We just we crashed the girls' night over there. But I remember just, no, I remember oh, maybe and then some of the guys came over. Yeah, they probably later. came back. Because they went to go it do sky things and we went to go sit by the fire and drink like fancy drinks. That was a fun night. That was a fun um, night. Um so yeah, so we got some whips, FOs, some um owl posts, which is super exciting. Super exciting. Um, oh my gosh, so such generous people. Some purchases, some break in the bank, and some yarn dyeing. Wow, we've got a jam-packed we do. episode. So let's, um, you have more FOs, so why don't we jump in and you can start us off with an FO. Okay, so, oh my gosh, there's a pile of things here. I know. Um, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, and the crinkling already. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Okay. So I needed a little bit of a palette cleanser after doing some sweater knitting. And I did... Oh, no. I did... um, I did, like, a slouchier version of the Ross hat. So... Oh, thanks. I used Knit Picks Felici Worsted in Beyond the Wall love colorway this color it's one it's of my self striping i love it so much it's 218 yards per 100 grams um it's a superwash 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon it's super soft i love how it stripes up yeah the stripes are great on right this. they're so good and i did it a little slouchier because i do like a slouchier hat but i also like to fold the brim i i did about two inches a two inch brim. Um, and I think it fits. Yeah. Very well. When you have the brim, when I have the brim, it Mm -hmm. fits really nicely. And then, but if you want it like super slouch, 
you know, you could definitely do that too and pull it off. Yeah. And then you're kind of like a Smurf. Yeah. So totally like a Smurf. So I did, um, this is the Ross hat in his worsted, the worsted weight version on his website, uh, smells like yarn.com. I think it's .com. Yeah. Um, he's got a ton of patterns actually, and all of his patterns are free. Um, he's really, you know, he really wants you just to knit his patterns and he's not asking for any money or any of that stuff. He just really wants to kind of share that and see what you're knitting. So, um, this is, this is free. I did the recommended cast on numbers and I, I did a two by two rib. I think he calls for a three by one. I think that's kind of like what he likes. I like a, a two by two, which is one of the cool things about his patterns is that they're so like modifiable, modifi- modifiable, modifiable, modifiable. That sounds like a, a doesn't that sound cool? It sounds like a, um, let's hashtag that. No, it sounds like an appetizer. Like, can I have a serving of modifiable? Doesn't it? It sounds like a dessert almost hmm. with honey dri- drizzled on top. Oh, okay. Right. Maybe. Yeah. So, um, I did, I did about, I don't know. Nine inches. You did. Yeah. I did nine inches total. Um, no, until you started your bind off until you started your, right. So I think it's like, it's like, it's 11 inches, the hat totally from, from top to bottom. What size needles do you use? I use the US eight on this. I love the decreases. It's a simple decrease, but it looks cool. Like that spiral. It it is. It's a nice decrease. Yeah. And, um, hitting it up so fast and I really love the self striping. I think I want to get some more colors from from Fili- from uh, nitpicks the Felici. But I don't know how many more that they have in this because they release yeah. it at the same time that they release their socks and they do that like new colors yeah. every six months or something like that. Um, so I don't I haven't checked I haven't been on actually nitpicks in, in a while. I want to say since we bought our sweater yarn. Really? Yeah, I probably haven't been there since. So then. I haven't even soaked this. I don't think I was I don't think I'm going to. But I love the stitch definition. I don't know if you guys can see that. No, it's very even. Yeah, it's very even. Agreed. And I love it. So that was that was a nice easy quick project. Yeah. Quick project to do. Free pattern. The yarn's really inexpensive um, when yeah. you're looking at a super And it's a hundred gram ball, which yeah. is different than the Felici sock, because the sock is only in fifty gram skeins. So this is a hundred grams. And even this their wool of the Andes, most of yeah. their yarn, the majority of their yarn is uh fifty gram. And I have ball. stuff I have left over. Nice. Yeah. So I could have done I might maybe if I do another one, I'll do a four inch um brim. But I kind of look, I kind of like how when it's folded, you can see that extra little pearl, like that pearl bump on the bottom. What if you you see um, that? I think that looks kind of cool. So if you did a four inch, it up a little bit. If you did a four inch brim, would you still do uh, then five inches of knitting, or would you then do another? Because if you did two inches, another seven inches. Yeah, I would probably do seven with, inches. Because then you wouldn't be able to wear yeah. it without folding the brim. Right, which I like wearing. I like wearing the folded brim. But though it's worsted, so I like a folded brim for fingering weight hats because it keeps my ears um, warmer. Because mm-hmm. this is where I usually get very cold. Not necessarily on the top of my head. So I don't know. But it was really fun. I, and it was so nice to just... Like sit down and like knit and knit while you're watching TV, yeah. and the yarn was easy to work with. It was nice and smooth. The you know on a, a US eight it goes like super fast. Yeah. So it's, for uh, me, this was uh, this fits fits very well. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Good job. I've made quite a few Ross hats. Um, it's just like my it's it's my go to like hat pattern. Hat pattern, like that simple vanilla hat pattern. That you can just do so much with it. Like, the counts are all right there. I love his decreases are super easy to do. Just, like, no thinking, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's one. You have another one? I do. Wait, how many do you have? Three? No, just a two. Oh, really? Yeah. Why do I think you have three? I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm, I don't, I don't, I didn't do that much. Oh, well, okay. I'm sorry. All right. I have a lot of whips, though. That's disappointing. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. (laughs) Jeez, talk about no pressure. So our next, we're going to do our next FOs as a set because we're both wearing them. What? Yes. Is that what you're wearing? We are. We both finished our what? Montrealers by... Yes. So um, by Vincent over at Le Garçon. At Bydell's. At Bydell's. This is the Montrealer. 
So this has been fun. We, this has been a lot of fun. What we did so designs is, by Dells. I think he still designs by Dells for his patterns. I, I think everything's by Dells. You think so? Yeah. So Aaron and I, um, so Aaron from Fiverr Hustle and I came up with this crazy idea at some point in our lives yeah. that we thought it'd be fun to do a, like a knit along, but not, you know, like a knit along from a podcast. So our Thursday night knit night group, a bunch of us decided to knit this sweater. We cast it on January 1st. January 1st. So it took us about a month or two and a half months to finish it. Uh, a bunch of people already finished. finished Some people are almost done in different phases because it was like without the stress. Right. It was no just. No end date. Whatever. And some yeah. people made modifications and do pockets or hoods or, you know, only two stripes or whatever. So um, we tried to stay true to pattern. Mistakes have been made. Mistakes have been made. Um, but I'm really happy with the Same. with the um, outcome of the sweater. Mm-hmm. I have knit mine. We both knit ours out of wool of the Andes. We did. I did. I don't know why I put mine so far. Wool away. of the Andes Delft Heather. Yep. Is my main color. This one is Fjord Heather. And then... I don't think I have the last... Oh, I do. Look at me. And then orange. So these were my three colors. Wow. Good for you. What are you looking for? I was My yarn is over there. I have a lot to walk over, though. So um, I was thinking that maybe some... Oh, here. I still have a lot of yarn left over. Yeah, you have... Well, you also bought a lot because you were not sure of your stripes, remember? Truth. Okay. So... And I did mine out of bamboo heather. This is also wool of the Andes um, superwash bamboo heather. Um, this is avocado. This is the stripe here. And then this is the oyster heather. And that's my contrast contrast colors, which we'll show. So I'll just stand up briefly. I will say I love the sweater. I love how it turned out. It's longer than I had expected i probably should have taken off maybe like three inches Mm -hmm. um and i knit the fourth size which is for a 44 inch chest um i have a little more positive ease than i was expecting but so this sweater to me is going to be my like night cool night sweater. absolutely like i can see myself wearing this around a bonfire like a fire pit going hang i mean not that we're really doing it because we don't hang out with people but just imagine just imagine. Just it imagine. would be hanging out with friends yeah. around a fire pit. It gets chilly at night. You go grab this from the car or the house. You throw it on, and it's super comfortable. So I have... No, s- it looks... I don't, I don't see, think... See, it's like super long. I don't know if you could see. It comes all the way down behind my bum. I did my pocket stripe. I did just a couple rows of the orange, and then I finished off in the dark blue. Um, I did my an I cord for the hood with the hood, the mistake that both of us made and it was just our interpretation of the pattern is I believe we were supposed to pick up these stitches here when working the hood and neither one of us did. So it should be in like this. Oh yeah. Look at that. Right. So what I believe we're going to try is crocheting it together. Um, like, I don't know. I'm going to figure out how to fix this. I had it done in I cord yesterday in orange and I didn't like the way it looks. So I cut it and took it out, but I believe we can fix this. So I'm going to, work I don't on think that. it looks bad actually with, no. with it open either. I like that look. I don't think it looks awful, yeah. but I do think it would look really nice yeah. like this Me too. too. Yeah. So I may try to find a way to um, fix that. I think what I thought was just picking up the stitches and knitting. No, you could. You can right? you... pick pick them up and knit back and forth and then just pick up along the edge of this. And do some decreases? And then, um, I don't know. Or do then, you think it'll just bring it together? I don't know. Bring it together and then it, we'd be able to fold it over and seam it. Okay, that seems like a lot. So I don't know. I might mess with it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it is, I would say it's like... I, oh, have I think a it's ton. a You do, but it's I think more, it's it's um, like a sweatshirt. And it's, you know, it's super long. It mm-hmm. is very sweatshirty. Um, but I love it. I think the pattern's written incredibly well. Me too. What I 
I don't know if we've ever shown this, and this is true with Max's patterns as well. When there is something in their pattern, it says technique, and it lists the name of the technique. And then if you go to the back of their patterns, like this one has the technique for, what am I doing? The mattress stitch, right? So mattress stitch and picking up stitches mm -hmm. through fabric. So it's written and there's a link to a video as well, which is fantastic. Correct. And throughout the pattern, what's really nice is if there's a technique, sometimes throughout the pattern, there's the um, link as well. And if you're working off your mobile device, you just tap on it, it takes you right to YouTube. So it's super, um, I mean, super easy, very yeah. well written. I think... If you took the hood off and you took the pocket off, it's a really great just raglan style. Absolutely. Um, sweat sweater as well, sweater pattern. And there's so, so many techniques in here that I had never done before that I thought was so good. You know, it was cool. To, it's always cool to learn something new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll stand up and show mine. So this one's mine, all finished. It's nice. Yeah. They came, they came out really well. Yep. I did. Um, I did a little bit more on my pocket um here with the contrast color i did a contrast color um right before the ribbing here as well and then what i tried to do um i'll sit back down but um but what i tried to do so so was, oh and somebody had asked about pick so i have like some positive ease here you know as well but what i somebody had asked um where you carry up your stitches oh, okay and right. how the color? Yeah, the color. So we both carried up um, the contrasting color. Yes. And the main color, like as yeah. we were knitting. So we didn't cut the yarn um, and, and rejoin it. We just ca kept carrying it up. And it gets carried up along the, the, the right side. And it's a it's not yeah. so, so noticeable. Like you can see it a little bit here. Yeah. But I actually did that too because I went to the comments for the pattern. Which I always recommend to do Me if too. you have questions about it. If you go to the comment section of the pattern in Ravelry, somebody had asked it in there and Vincent had replied to them and said that he doesn't like weaving in his ends. So mm -hmm. he carried his colors all the way up as yeah. well. And so um, I started carrying mine up every two rows as opposed to every one row because mm -hmm. I found that every one row gave you a little bit more of a bunchy type of seam. Oh. But, and I started that up here, and you can see it's a little bit bunchier, or it feels bunchier if you touch it. Oh, yeah, it. maybe. And so once I switched to doing it, carrying the yarn up every two rows, um, it kind of relaxed that fabric a little bit better nice. along the side. I don't know if that's just the way that's that I tip. knit it. Um, so if anybody else has some experience with that, or if I'm just, maybe I just, I don't know, it just got lucky. Um, but that's what I did. I, um, I also, for the hood, I did... I did a, a stripe, or I did the um, the, the band, band in your contrast in the yeah the first contrast color, which I really like. The one thing that I did not like the mistakes that have been made on the hood. I'm not a great seamstress, seam so, seamer. I picked up the incorrect number of stitches. So you knit the hood in panels, you you seam them together. And then you pick up the stitches all along the front of the hood. And that's where you're going to put your cord. And so I picked up the stitches. And I think I was like 40 stitches shy of where I should be. That's a lot of stitches. Did not realize it until... Because it's still a lot of fabric that you're knitting, you know, and, and whatever. And he says how many stitches that you should have. Not the pattern's fault. Um, So I kind of just went with it. And then when I went to go seam it together, I have... I'll show you guys. I have a little bit of a oh. of a pucker here. <laughs> <laughs> he said a little bit. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take How that. Mine look? I'm going to take that out. Oh, yours looks perfect. Yeah, it looks really good. It's even. I I took some out and I redid it. Yeah, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take out this whole this whole section, okay? Um, because it's just the picked up stitches, so I'm not gonna like lose anything. So I can just pick out the the light um, avocado color here. I have we did I cords as well. 
I did pattern, a 40 inch. You I did, did a 60, 60 inch. But yeah, I like the 40, I think. But it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Teach their own, really. Um, and I, we both did our I chords in, oh no, I did my I chord in the, yeah, I did mine in my secondary, the oyster in my secondary. Oh, that's good. Color. I liked it. I, I almost went orange and I was like, you know what? No, it looks great I, the I, way it does. I like the light blue. I didn't yeah. know how much orange I wanted around my face Truth. either. Truth. So I stayed away from it. I do okay. like the idea and I may, if I fix this and can figure out how to fix it, I may fix it in orange. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, because I thought it would be cool. Like, I kind of like how it's just, it's open though, like that. I don't know. Actually, I, I kind of want to fix this. Happy. I probably will. I I will probably fix it. But, um, so what else can we say about this? So we knit it on the recommended needles, which are six and seven, US six and a US seven. Yep. Needles. Um, yep. I and I also knit the same size as Kevin, so I did the uh, fourth size, the forty four inch um, chest, because I wanted some negative ease, positive ease. I would go, I want to see what the next size down is. I don't know if it's 42 or 40, but I think if I were to knit this again, what I would do is go down a size. Um, the next size is a 40, so I don't. Yeah, I don't think I, I would. Down. I would just, I would, you can always go down a needle size if you wanted to. Well, but I'm really happy with the fabric that it created. I am too. On the US 7s. And that was one of the struggles. Remember, I did two swatches i swatched yeah. with a seven and i swatched with a six and i like the size of the seven better right or not the size i'm sorry i like the fabric, the fabric that the seven made better so that's why i stuck with this um but again i'm super happy with the way it turned out i this is going to be a type of sweater that i oh, can yeah. live in i wasn't going for a sweater that i could wear with like a pair of slacks mm -mm. or um, a fitted sweat, uh, fitted sweater. I wanted more sweatshirty style. Yes. Uh, so it has checked off all those boxes. Same. Um, and I, I, I love. I actually like the more that I'm wearing it. This is the first time that I've, I've worn it for an extended period of time. This is the first time I've worn it at all. It just. Oh yeah, you're right. It just finished drying this morning. I blocked it yesterday. You're right. Mine's been done oh, for about we a talk week. Talk about that too. Okay. And um, I, I love the feeling of this and the fit of this much better than my flax. Flax. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I don't know. I probably would, I would, I would look more when I, if I do it again, I would probably alter some of the raglan here and start my stripe sooner. So that was something we found too, is that you're a looser knitter. I am. Than I am your rose. Yeah. So your stripe, although I don't think it's too different. I think both of our stripes could be up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Um, but your raglan I think you're supposed to get, let's say, 11 inches. You got 13. Yeah, you I got, got like more. an extra two inches with right. the, doing the same number of raglan right. um, increases. So that was interesting to see that difference between our knitting working Agreed. on the same project. I wonder if you can just do the raglan section on smaller needles and then you, s like switch to larger needles for the body, or if that's gonna like if that changes so many things. I don't know because I am I'm work I'm prior to starting this I was working on the Boseron and. Yeah. I am doing the chest in a smaller needle than I will. The rest of it? Yeah. The, really? Yeah. it's The body's in a larger needle size than the, no, smaller needle size than the chest. The chest is a larger needle size. So I, so maybe it wouldn't make that much of a difference. But for me, maybe that'll be all the difference in the world just right. to go down a needle size just for the um, the raglan increases. I am, I'm just so happy with this. And to your point, what you wanted to say about blocking these, yes. the sweaters. We were. So, I was very nervous about um, it stretching, like very, very nervous because already, like there was so much positive ease already built into it, um, and knowing that I was a looser knitter, at the more and more I was knitting, I was like, oh geez, oh geez, and so we we used our spin cycle on our um, washing machine. Right. So this is kind of like a a spin dryer update, guys. Too. So. We were talking about the spin dryer, talking about a spin dryer, going back and forth about spin dryer and an axe, spin dryer and a chainsaw. <laughs> but <laughs> people have recommended, and I kept forgetting, to use our top-loaded washer and yes. just use the spin cycle. Right. So I've done, and it's super successful. So what we did with this is we both soaked ours at we separate did. times. And, and then we have these like little, we have this little bin. I actually took a picture of it. 
Carry on. And then instead of picking up the sweater out of the the soak, because that's just naturally going to stretch it because of all the weight if you don't pick it up yeah. gently. We threw the whole bit right in the washing machine. Like we, so this is my sweater soaking. So we took, yeah, so all of it, the whole thing, all, liquid and all, and dumped it, it right in into our washing washer machine. and then put it on the spin cycle, and it came out incredibly, like, barely damp. Yeah, like really, really well, uh, and it dried within a day. Yep, this has been drying less than twenty four hours. Yeah, so and it's a lot of it's heavy. It's a heavy sweater. Right, the fabric is you know it's heavy. It's, it's worse the weight. weight. Yeah. So. If you have a top load spit dryer and you haven't tried this, totally do it. It works incredibly well. It really did. Like just to pour. And I was like so scared. I'm like. I don't know. I why. just pour this whole thing like right in. Yeah. Changed my life. Um, I will be needing more more sweaters now. All right. Cool. So I I think that's everything on this sweater, um, right? So again, I Montreal or so. by Dells. Great. Great pattern. Yeah. Um, oh, and so I had a question about the I-cord because I wasn't sure how thick to make the I-cord because there's a couple of different, you know, you can do it uh, different ways. You can do like five stitches, three stitches, two stitches, or not two stitches, but um, this is a three stitch Oh yeah, I did I-cord, three And well. I think it's perfect, perfect width. I've never done anything other than a three stitch I-cord, honestly. Um, well, they, I was looking on Very Pink Knits and I forgot who else, just to see like a recommended um, drawstring because the... The pattern um, does not give instructions on how to make a drawstring. It just says to have a drawstring, like right. as part of the, you know, when you go through and it like, lists the needle sizes that you're gonna need and the type of yarn that you need. Like his doesn't look like he made it. He, his looks like a normal drawstring. Yeah, for a, that you would sweatshirt. buy. Mm-hmm. So it says drawstring measuring at least forty inches. So. Um, so you could buy one or make one. Yeah, and we decided to make them. Um, I use the size six needle for mine. I and use the size six needle as well. Um, yes. Okay. So that is. Those are our Montrealers, guys. They're done. Yay. Good for us. Good First for sweaters us. of the year. Cheers. Um, all right. So that's it for FOs. Let's move on. Into that's it for FOs. Our whips. Oopsh, oopsh, oopsh. Okay. I have one. I have three. Then you can start us off. Okay. So let's stay on theme. With our, sorry if I shook the table, with our um, spring cleaning mal. So I had mentioned that, and you guys who have been watching for a while probably remember that I started a blanket. I started knitting a blanket on um, the Lion Brand cover story. And thank you for all of those who had um, made some comments and letting me know what it it was called. I couldn't find the tag for some strange reason. Um, But this is Lion Brand Cover Story. It's a gigantic cake of yarn that we got over at Joann's. It's 2.2 pounds, uh, 547 yards, and it's 100% polyester. I got this in the mercury color. I don't know if you all can see that. Mercury color. And it's a super bulky. I took out the entire knitting and I started crocheting it. So I started a crochet blanket here. I am actually, and I went down a a hook size, quite a few hook sizes actually, because I wanted a denser fabric for the blanket and like less holy. So this is the, um, I believe these are clover. It is clover. Yeah. This is a nine millimeter um, hook. It's got the, the the bigger hook sizes have plastic. The smaller hook sizes have that um, brushed metal on it. It's super comfortable. I, I just, I love the feel of these crochet hooks. And so this is what I have so far. I'm just, I just made it, kind of made it up um, as I went. I wanted to do like 60 inches width. So this is going to be the width of the blanket. It's going to be huge. Do you think you're going to need another? I will. I'll need, I'll I'll likely need more than one. So I just did a simple um, half double crochet with a smaller hook size and it created a really dense, squishy fabric that's going to be super nice to cuddle with. How many um, did you chain to start? 
I just, I just, so with, with crochet, I just chained it to about 60 inches. Oh, so you don't count. You just measure. No, for something that large, if I'm doing something like a scarf or, or something with length when I crochet, you just, I just chain the length that I'm looking for. And I don't necessarily keep track of my stitches. Um, the one thing that sometimes can get me is the, the edging, you know, with crochet, especially with this yarn, it's like, okay, is that a stitch? Is that not a stitch? But so far, so good. I did about, I don't know, 10 rows or so, which knits up or crochets up so fast. And this is the gigantic cake or what I have left of it. I had to put it in a, in a box. Ooh. So this is oh, what, wow. this is cover story and I'm doing center pull. So this is the width of the, the actual, you know, ball of yarn itself. I did go co through quite a bit of yarn on this, which is why I feel like I'm going to need quite a few more. I'm not opposed to doing a bunch of different colors. What if they don't have it anymore? That's what I'm saying. I'm not opposed to doing a oh whole bunch gosh, of different colors. Oh my gosh, that would give me stress in my life. That's unnecessary. No, it's okay. It's going to be nice and, and, and cozy. I'm not really in a rush for this. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it before the end of our make-along. Because well, I have a lot of other things that I want to do as well. I know, but you did that pretty quickly. You just started that this week. Yeah, I, this just is a only, couple this nights is, ago. This is two days. Yeah. Yeah, but just like a couple of hours, really. And I was like, I think Crochet I did some. is so much quicker than knitting. It is. Yeah. But it uses I, way I, more yarn. Though. It does, but I really enjoy, I enjoy the process of crocheting. I do want to try those crochet hooks that I've been seeing on a lot of people's that Chevis podcasts got. that Chevis got. Right? I can't remember the name of it. Me Maybe neither. if somebody re remembers, if they can put it below. I know. I think they're a little on the pricier they side. They are. But I would love to get like a... Uh, a nine, I think this would be perfect for that because it's it's comfortable to work with. Mm -hmm. They were saying, and there's some wood ones and some metal ones, so I wouldn't. I would. Um, I'd like to try it for this for this blanket. But anyway, I I love it. It's just been nice to to crochet and a half double crochet is, yeah, that's him. Oh. And a half double crochet is um is pretty easy and quick to go through. The yarn is just a little bit thick, and on the smaller hook, just a little bit more finesse, but. That's one. Okay. Okay. And the next one, I only put a few more rows on this one. Oh, this is part of our backwards. I know, so don't. No, not yet. No, take the bag out. Take it no, out. No, I then. can't because I want to oh. show how everything is. It's beautiful. I'm going to get him, I think. Okay. I can I'll talk be back. About, I can talk about this guy. Yeah. All right. So this, this is living in a Knit for Brains bag from Laura. I love this bag. We showed this um, not too long ago. This is a medium, I think her like medium size tote. Um, it's got drawstring. It's it's just absolutely amazing. There's some Harry Potter fun things on the inside. So what I did here is I was looking to, I was looking to use up the yarn that I got from our local yarn shop. And it is the Brooklyn Tweed Dapple yarn. And it's a wool cotton blend. I showed this, boy, I feel like we got this a while ago. But I got it in um, these two colors. This one, I think it's called denim, but I'm, I'm probably wrong because I'm usually wrong on a lot of things. This one is called, oh, Blueprint. So this is Blueprint. And this one is called Natural. So again, this is 60% merino and 40% organic cotton. It's it Brooklyn Tweed. Tarquin, there's nowhere for you to go, my friend. And we got these over at Knit New Haven. A couple months ago. Yep, and my intention for this yarn was to knit um, that cowl that Kevin had designed a while ago. And we knit a few of them. And this is what it looks like finished. I did not do this. I did this a while ago. Um, but this is this is what it looks like finished. And so we are writing out the pattern. But we also wanted to see what it looked like in solid colors. Because both of them had been knit in speckles. Yes. So I have like a bunch of the whole pattern written out on little note papers. And this is what I have so far. I only did one section. So it's kind of hard to see. Oh, I'm afraid that the 
stitches are going to pop out of He this. wanted to go lay in his chair in the sun. Oh, he did? He, well, he can't because we're busy. So this is what I have so far. Um, you can't really tell yet with the pattern, but I love the colors together. I think they're they're really bold. And I have to say, knitting with this, the stitch definition, I believe, I think is really good on this. The one thing that I have to say is that it does feel like knitting with cotton um, when you're actually knitting with it. So it's a little bit resistive, I think, if that's the right word. You know, it's a little bit... Um, it's not a, Yeah, and it's not as stretchy. It's not as stretchy when you're knitting with it's it. It's 50-50? No, it's 60-40. 60 wool, 40 60 cotton? 60 wool, 40 okay. cotton. But the product is super soft. So I'm excited. Um, I think it's a cool color combination, the white and the blue. Yeah, I mean... I don't think you can really go wrong. It's very nautical to me. It seems very nautical or Greek. Like those Greek frescas and stuff that you yeah, see. Yeah, I would go like, more like that than nautical because nautical, I think navy and white. Oh, maybe. Nah. Yeah. Like, this, okay, maybe. You're that's right. That's almost like a water blue. It yeah. reminds me of like water. But I love the features that this this pattern has, like the the rolled um, brim before you start the ribbing, and then it's a simple pattern. Yeah. It's like an. It's, eight, it's, it's eight very rows. simple. It's an eight row, row repeat, eight, eight stitch. stitch repeat, and I'm probably gonna do eight panels. Maybe that would be kind of cool if, like, you know. I don't remember. Eight, eight. I think it? this one is, like, nine or Nine ten, repeats? Maybe. Something like that? I'm not quite sure. Very nice. Thanks. So. Did you um, talk about your bag that it's in? Yes, I did. Oh, good. And it's it's a six-pocket bag, I believe. There's, like, six pockets in here. Oh, there's my stitch marker that I was looking for. So, I love this. It's been, it's been going well. I just started this the other day. Um... So I'm hoping to have more of that done soon. Okay. Those are two of mine. Do you want to go with yours? Yes. Oh my so God, mine is living in my so Lila much. Styles bag, yeah. which I love. Has a little Deathly Hollows. I love it. You can see Deathly Hollows. Mm -hmm. So this is, I've made very little progress on this. Oh, I love the inside. I'm working. How fun. Yeah. The inside is just like a Polka white. Polka dots. And blue polka dot. That's fun. It's a great little yeah. good size bag here. Um, this this is coming out amazing. I am knitting the Paris Tajour by Isabel Kramer. It is being knit on a DK weight yarn that I dyed. Here is the color. A really bluey gray. Yeah. And I'm not, I didn't get too much further. So I'm putting a stitch marker when I complete a section, and I believe I have to do this repeat like six times. So I'm in the middle. This is the end of my first repeat, end yeah. of my second. So I'm working on the third repeat now. I'm actually going to put a stitch marker on it today so I can keep track of my progress between Good idea. episodes because I really haven't knit on this much. Right. But I do, I love the pattern. It is Me too. super simple. And it's so, dra it feels like it's going to be so drapey and like wonderful. I haven't knit on this until this morning, I had a knit on this since the last episode that we recorded. Oh, yeah. I didn't even look at the pattern to just start again. Like, that's how easy it is to rem to memorize this pattern. I just picked it up and went, and I knew exactly where I needed to be. Um, so I do. I, I love this pattern. Um, I was inspired because of Aaron from Fiber Hustle yeah. again. He was wearing it several episodes ago, and I asked him what it was. And I wanted to make it. So this will be one of my focuses now that the Montrealer is done. And I love it. I love it too. I have four skeins of this dyed up. I'm knitting this How much does on, it call for? How much yarn? I don't do remember. Know? What am I knitting this on? I'm knitting this on a five millimeter or a US eight. These are on my Addies, which again, I talk about this before I do. Um, I have them on my Addy Rockets on five inch tips uh, for my interchangeable set, just cause I really do love how yeah. slick the needles are. And I like having that extra um, length. So I have more stitches on my needles. It makes it a little more manageable um, with the shawl and it c holds the weight a little bit better. So you don't have all the weight on your cord. I do have to say that the, the adding needles are definitely, I think slicker than um, yes. the chow goose. Absolutely. Chow goose almost feel like they're brushed. Yeah. Um, they're not, um, they're not as slick. Yeah. 
At least the ones that we have. If Chow Goose and Addie's had ever baby. had a baby totally. and had a chatty. A chatty? It could be a chatty or an... Or an algu. Adgu. Adgu. An adgu. Adgu. That would be the perfect needle. Adding needles, chagu cords, make it happen. Let's so that get is, together, what do you say? That's my only whip, and I honestly think it's the only reason it's a whip is because I knit on it this, mor- this morning. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think I would have had a whip. I don't think I, really? I really don't know that I've worked on this since the previous episode. No, you were, you hunkered down. Like, you knit so much on that sweater in the past, like, week. It's yeah. ridiculous. So, the you last, did. Last episode, I hadn't even finished. I don't think I started my pocket. So, I did the pocket, joined the pocket to the body, did my ribbing, did both no, sleeves. No, I think you did the pocket. You just didn't join it yet. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. remember. I don't know. Either um, way. Did the ribbing for the body, both yeah. sleeves, the hood, the eye cord, the seaming. So I did a lot of knitting sure on did. this in the last two weeks. It was literally my main focus. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's it for my whips. And do you have another one? I have one more. I don't, oh, I do know what it is. Duh. Now, I want to show this in like what I have it stored in because this is beyond. Okay. Is that okay if I do that now? Yeah, go. I mean, okay. hey, it's your day, princess. Thanks. So, speaking of fiber hustle, Aaron and Chip are amazing individuals. Chip is extremely talented. If you guys do not watch Fiber Hustle, please give them a go. Um, Aaron, Aaron knits and Chip um, sews and Chip makes amazing quilts. He and really he does. just started. He's looking to break into the basket kind of game. So we always joke around about getting a chip basket after we saw him show it on a couple of their episodes prior. A while ago. A while ago. And during bingo, he must have like sewn his little fingers off because during bingo, he had some chip baskets as prizes. Yeah. And I'm going to show you in a minute because Kevin won. I did win a bingo. And because Chip's heart is apparently three sizes bigger than we all thought it was. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Such a jerk. I know. He sent me one as well. So I have my next whip housed in this. And I, I, I want to show it like in the bag because there's so much room in here. Or the basket because they're baskets. They're not bags. They're not bags. They're, they're chip baskets. baskets. So this is the basket that I got. So good. it is. I, I'm. I'm like. There's no words. There really the are no words is for this. Amazing. It's amazing. It's quilted, as you can see. Um, the inside is like a jersey cotton softness. Yeah. Thank God we don't have a cat because I feel like the cat would be like living in here. Faux show. Faux show. And in here, I have my whip which I showed last time. I didn't get much more done, but this is the honeycomb painting honeycomb shawl by Stephen West. And these are the small honeycombs. There's also a large honeycomb um, pattern. Which is so Which nice. is so good. Our friend Elizabeth um, is probably finished by now. No. I don't know. She only had a couple more rows left, she oh, said. Really? She was doing this amazing like fade. And I think she's using um, she's using an alpaca alpaca, yeah. so it's like drapey and beautiful. Yeah. So um, anyway, so this is the small version, and you get both when you buy the pattern. You get you the do. small and you get the large honeycomb pattern. So this is what I have so far, and I was I only did about four more sections. So this is this is where I was. This is our cute little, oops. Is that the bear? Yeah. Yeah. Our little Le Garcon. So keep it here because you can kind of see the colors yes. a little bit better than from far away right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm using our Trilogy Yarn Advent, uh, her Halloween Hocus Pocus Advent. And I'm calling this like the Chaos Shawl because it looks, but it's like beautiful chaos. Beautiful chaos. I'm going to call this the Beautiful Chaos Shawl. Isn't that that book? No. No. Yes. What? I think it was. So remember that book? 
the be- beautiful creatures where the movie was yes, awful. It was. I awful. think one of the. But books this is was, not awful. No, but I think one of the books was called Beautiful Chaos. Oh really? They were all beautiful something. Darn it! Maybe I won't call it that. Anyway, um, I so what I'm doing is, and I have this in this basket along with. So this is this is my this is what I've been doing. So it's a thirteen color um, mm-hmm. advent. So you get. 12 skein, uh, mini skeins, and then the 13th is the 100 gram skein. I believe. There might be 14, actually. There I might thought be 13 it was 13 colors, colors in a and then a, skein. Uh, yeah, I don't remember, I don't actually. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just pulling at random. So this bag has the balls that I still need to go through. And then when I'm done, I just, I've been putting them, you know, just in here. There's so much room in this. There, in this there's a lot of room in, in there. I bag. actually, I had my sweater housed in mine. Yeah. And so I'm just pulling them out random. So these are the colors. I just I just took my hand in and grabbed the colors out. Um, I'm going to continue to do that. I think I'm going to repeat it like four or five times. I think that's what the, the number count breaks down to. So I'm just pulling at random. I love how it's, I really love how it's knitting up. It's actually very drapey too, which I'm surprised that it feels so drapey. I love the back. Isn't that so good? Yeah, the best. And don't worry about these tails. People were like, oh my God, you know, your ends, try this. I've been I've been doing the Weave and Steven method the entire time, so I could really just snip these um these suckers right out, which is exactly what I did for the slip stravaganza shawl. So um these are these do not need to be woven in, because they already are as I'm knitting. I just need to cut them. And yeah, this is what I have so far. Looks good. It looks good. So have it's, you? It's so interesting. Have you used all? I wish 13? you all can see it in person. Have you used all thirteen colors? Yes. Yet? Okay. So that's where this was. So I, I wanted to get all the colors in. Gotcha. So this, from here, down. Okay. Those are all the colors. But the neat thing about these minis, is that they're so, like, variegated and speckled that every time I knit with one. It's gonna look. It looks different yeah. because it's not like Nancy. The way that Nancy did it, it's just like it's just amazing from you know from start to finish. So even though I'm grabbing them at random, it's not gonna look like they're repeated in weird ways because the well, yeah, because the, the the next section you're has, using more yeah. each section, so the color variation is going to be even different. extended over more stitches. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to look the same way. And that's where I'm really excited about. So I was really looking for a way to use up the um the advents this is our first year of of getting advents so we got um the halloween advent and we also got the christmas advent too and i was like instead of doing like a blanket or something i wanted to try something different so very nice so far i'm very happy with it and it's it's a very fun knit it's very easy to memorize the pattern as well but um i'm not quite at the tv knitting phase because you kind of have to count before you slip your stitches and then mm. Um, I, I tend to forget an increase from time to time. Yeah. So I'm not there yet, but I think as I, as I knit more, I'll be able to do it while I'm occupied on other things. Cool beans. Thanks. So that's all of our FOs and whips. That's all of our whips and FOs. we're going to move into... Uh Uh-oh. Hey, Booger. Hi, sweetheart. What's up? Not yet. Yeah. You got to lay down I'm getting there too. I know. It's almost um, lunchtime, but it's so not... Go lay down. Um, so we have, let's jump into um, some olive post. Okay. So I'm going to follow up yours with my chip basket. Sounds good. Um, so this basket, oh, I forgot that downstairs. What? Right. The, oh, no, it's over there. Okay. So I won my chip basket in Fiber Hustle Bingo. Ooh. So my, my that loud in my chair. Is also quilted. I... I love, love this too. This I was so excited when I saw this. Yes. Um, you want to come up? Come here. So mine is uh, like raises cotton. Mine's like more of a canvas fabric. Really great. And I still have my yarn left over from the sweater in here. It holds so much and it's so convenient because there's no zipper. So you don't really have to worry about your yarn getting stuck on anything. Um, and it's always by... On the side of the couch. Yes. That's where it's been living. Yep. With projects that I'm working on. Here, books. Do you want to go in here? You could sit in there. He could. Tarquin needs a haircut next week. You getting your hair cut next weekend? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so that is... Did you talk about the inside is a little bit different? Yeah, I said that both... It's My inside, too, is also like a canvas fabric. Yeah. Um, and the foam is a little bit different. So mine's a little sturdier, So which I love. I love the, the sturdiness of this. Um, they're both just so good. They're incredibly well made. Chip did an amazing job with these. So... Um, amazing job oh it's such a good it is uh, so hopefully i think you know he's really nice. he's ironing out some things no pun intended um i think they're gonna look at potentially making them available but i'm not i'm not sure so he's still working thank you you're cute on a couple of things but um chip thank you so much yes thank you chip so and Aaron, so much you guys are fantastic did you show the the book you got with it oh and then i got a book chip sent me a book with mine the Jockstrap Murder. What? I don't know. Is it a gay novella? It is. You know I love my gay novellas. So thank you. Get an education while I knit. Yeah, quite the education you'll get. Um, the next came from an amazing... This is uh, Prairie Dog Bags on Etsy. Um, Prairie, 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 Bag Prairie Bag Works. works. On Etsy. On Etsy. So I was thinking will, dog because he's like right here. It will be linked below. It will. Hi. And um, so Sue oh. sent us a couple items that we can um, use They're, for giveaways and I don't or wanna, keep. I know. I want to do both. How um, do we do both? <laughs> she sent us a, a really nice um, letter with it. So Sue, thank you so much. First, we got two size yarn bowls. So these come... So these are yarn bowls that she makes. Yes. These are the two sizes. So this one's like a medium. This one's a small. This one has a little thing on it that says eat, sleep, knit. This one is blank. Um, I checked the Etsy shop and there's multiple like things that you can get. I think one was like an alpaca. One yeah, was a she sheep. has. Um, um, I think it's in here too, right? Yeah, there's a. Oh, I had it somewhere. It? All right. So these are rope bowls. And you slide your yarn, I think, through here. It's just so well made. It has a little so thing well over made. here. I love it. It's very sturdy. I don't know where the um, the other... She has a... like a. There was a little paper I, or something that had the different... We may have oh, left look it. at the handmade tags. I, I didn't even notice all that. Yeah, there's um, oh, man. care instructions that come with it. Look at or the blank tags. tags that you can use. Yeah, for care instructions. We're going to so, definitely give those away. I think those would be fantastic gifts. And then, I know he's gonna freak out probably. Oh, there it is. Oh. I left it in the bag. Oh, here we go. So here's some of the things that come on it. So alpaca, a sheep. Um, I love yarn, yarn snob. Knit, sleep, repeat. Knit, sleep, repeat. So really great. And then yeah. she also sent us a couple bags. So sorry for the he's crinkling. Crinkling. So, bag number one is the yarn sheep. But there's there's skeins of yarn and balls right. of yarn. That's, How freaking cute! That's why I called them yarn sheep. <gasps> Look at the in the inside, and the inside yeah. is polka dots, and there's a ruler right here, like in knit or sewn into uh -huh. it. And Super there's like a little cute. hook grommet looking thing on the inside, too. Yeah. There's some grommet. Yeah, or or uh, you can put your stitch markers on there. This has a sti has stitch markers. I, I can't. Right, so we have a Sue. Sheep. Oh my gosh. Stitch Sorry, marker. I got some a light bulb distracted. ones, and then some of the cards. Okay. There is one, two pockets inside, and they are incredibly ma well made. And then we have a nice. This one's a drawstring, right? So really, really pretty. Yeah. Well made. Has our little um, tag here. I love it. And then this is a larger one. This is really pretty flower. Oh my gosh. And look at the bunnies, bunnies. on it. How perfect for Easter. Right. And springtime. So really nice handle. It's really thick and sturdy. It is. Then this has... And I like how the, she seamed them like above each other. Do you yeah. see that? So that you can um, carry it around a little bit easier. And then this has a little, on the zipper, has an eat, sleep, knit progress keeper. Or you could keep it as a zipper pull. Nice green zipper on it. 
And then here again is that little cute ruler. What a fabric great idea. Sewn into it. This also has two pockets. They're very nice large pockets. And then same thing. We have a little sheep. This is a stitch marker with the little bead on it and then some light bulb ones and then the care instructions. And this one here has the Kitchener stitch on the back of it. So does this one. It's just really well done. Um, thank you so much, Sue. That was Absolutely. super generous. And I really think I, I would love to be able to give all of this away because yeah, I mean, they we, are so when we got them, I don't think amazing. We, no, we got them after last episode, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we have our... Look at this is her business card. We will have a link to her Etsy shop below yep. in the description of this mm -hmm. episode. Um, so go check out her shop. Buy some of her stuff. You will love it. We love it. And then we will be sending these out to some lucky winners for... Uh, maybe for the Spring Mal. We'll see which yeah, one but it's going to... Yeah, but we maybe have, we even uh, do sooner than that, too. We could. Let, let's not get ahead of her. Let's not... Um, yeah, but that's that's like, not I, improv. We 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 are not improv. improv. We We're are not improving right now. Yeah, but how cute would that bag be for nope. like a little Easter we, giveaway nope, or something? No improv. Nope. Mm -mm. Blame Kevin. Nope. Blame Kevin. So right. again, really, thank you so much. We we cannot express our thanks. And then we have one more. Enough. Um. Ugh. Oh, they have a Facebook page as well and an Instagram. Prairie Bagworks on Facebook and Instagram. So check out Sue and Prairie Bagworks, guys. Yes. And then our last one is kind of a spoiler. So before I show it, we will speak of it. I have more things. From? From our Ikea trip. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I meant from. <gasps> oh, my gosh, this I can't believe. Oh, and then after this, I'm going to jump into yarn before we do acquisition, uh, break in the bank. Because typically I talk about yarn before we do this. So if you purchased... I didn't know that there was a typical with us. There isn't, but there is. There's some type of sense to what we do. Okay. In order, in a weird way. Okay. It's like so, my shawl. Right. Um, so Max and Vincent are... They're super great guys we've had the opportunity to chat with them on instagram they're really nice they're super funny um and they <laughs> this is they, max and vincent from, from Le Garcon, garçon max um, the knitter and by dells yeah so um we've been fortunate enough to like chat with them here and there and they without <laughs> um without speaking with us we just got an email that said Oh, we had an order from Lake Arson coming to us. And they were very generous and they gifted us their. I don't um, even. I feel like it's so crazy. His dark materials. We talked about pop. this. So we know that it's showing on Instagram. So some people have received their shipments. If you haven't, um, then look away. I'm going to give you three seconds. Three, two, one. So. It came packaged incredibly well. Oh my and gosh! This is what the yarn came in, and I couldn't. Kevin couldn't. I couldn't bear to rip this. Yeah, which is funny. Um, so it came wrapped in this, and look at the little sticker of um, Yurik. He's so cute. So I don't cute. I want to ruin it. It's so cute. That's it's designed so by Max. Yeah, Max, Max is an amazing artist. That, and then this is the yarn. This yarn is based on Lyra and her demon. Pan. Pan. <laughs> Are you ready? So this is two skeins. Yes. We have the red, which is Lyra. Yes. We have the white, which is Pan. And then this stitch marker, Progress Keeper, is him too. And then look, he's right there. He's Isn't very it? cute. So this white is mohair. We've never touched no. or worked with mohair. Mm-mm. So, no, thank God I shaved. I feel like um, it would be all over my And then my beard. if you look at it this way, the this down here is a much darker red. Yeah, it's they, beautiful. Um, we actually watched their most recent episode last night. Yeah. So it's Happy Hour with Le Garcon. They have a, a YouTube channel. Right. Which maybe three. we'll link below. Um, episode 3, 
was on last night or mm-hmm. we watched it last night and um they talk about this and like kind of like the significance of wrapping yeah. it together, yeah. which is really, really smart. If we ever um, go to Montreal, we'll have them make us some drinks because boy, they make some amazing well, they cocktails made, on them. Um, hot toddies. Hot toddies. Yeah, I'm and down then for that. The yarn in addition then came wrapped. Did you say what the other base was? Oh, it is a BFL. Yeah. It is so that's BFL. the first time that I've, I've, wor- I'll have worked with BFL. I, I believe that's the same with me. I don't know that I've used yeah. BFL before. I you, you, correct. I haven't used BFL. I've only used Cordale. Mm-hmm. Um, BFL seventy five percent BFL and twenty five percent nylon. And then you got this. Oh, it's a kid mohair silk blend. Bag. I know. How freaking Look cute at is this that? Tote. So this is Lyra. Yeah. In her hat, which and her, her knitted hat, hat. I love is it. In the show, is a, I, I love the hat. Yeah. She's knitting something, Pan and Yurik sleeping with his armor. With his golden and armor. And some trees in the forest under the sky with stars. So when this came, I like sent them a message. I was like so excited. <laughs> Ray really was. I just like, I went, I went you know, crazy. I was like, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. can you tell I'm excited? And like, no, we couldn't tell. <laughs> I always wonder if people can tell. So a lot of the times... Like our group discussions are happen under the needles at the ready account. Mm. So I always wonder if people can tell the difference between you and I responding. Sometimes I just do a like a dash K at the end of mine so people know like it's coming from me. Or chances whatever. are if you receive a message from Needles at the Ready and it's very expressive and emotional, it would be me. Yeah. For and if it 100%. seemed dry and to the point, it it's would totally be Kevin. <laughs> um so that Guys, is that for? Oh, Tarquin. For um. Owl post. Owl post. So now let's talk about some yarn that I've dyed. Yeah, so and dug- thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you again for all of you who have sent us things. Yeah. It just it it's you don't have to, and it's just incredible when we get these little packages in the mail and we get to share. Um, you know your shops and some of the things that you make it it's it just it opens up our eyes too just how creative and amazing all of you people are who do these things yeah it's just incredible and it's and i hope that we're able to express to everybody else watching how you know how appreciative we are and how amazing some of these products are and um Hi. we just really want to support you so thank you so much. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Really say yeah, thank you. Enough. Absolutely. So it's really awesome when mm-hmm. we get to share stuff with you guys. Yeah. Looks laying your bed. All right. So. All right, yarn guy. A few more things. Oh my god, these can be right. great. Oh wow. So I haven't seen these like. These are. I have four things of yarn that I've dyed, that I haven't shown yet. So these two are really recent. I should have brought the, this one up. So this one is. Um, a tonal gray with some speckles of green and speckles of gray. It is on a DK base. Here it is, unwound. It came out really, really, really I well. Oh, I love this little like shadowy. Love this section. Um, this was really fun. This was the first time I used citric acid when dyeing. Yeah. Which I really like that way more than using vinegar. So you can see some of the green over here. Um, I use the same gray that I made the dye stock with for the speckles. So it just came out much, you know, darker. Um, I love this. This, I love the way this turned out. Me I too. think it's really, really pretty. Me too. Um, yeah. And it's so soft. It is. It's a really nice um, yeah. DK base. Then the next one is based on a picture which I meant to bring up and I did Oh, yeah. So I have a, we have a picture in the living room that I took a couple years ago going to like an abandoned beach area here in Stratford. Um, it's kind of like on the Stratford Bridgeport line. And in the picture, um, it is this old abandoned shack that has like a rusted red orangey paint on the outside. And you can see some almost like it's like a what is it, like the beach like those grass, grasses that those beach tall grass grasses. that's uh, mm-hmm. that that's like a straw color um a blue sky and then going through it the picture i took is you can see from the outside 
past it, it like through two windows. So then the interior of the building just came out like this really gray black. So I wanted to incorporate the straw with the rustiness of the building, the black of the interior and the blue sky. So I dyed this with a like a darker yellow tone and then just tried some speckles of the orange, the blue, and I used gray instead of like true black. So I don't know that it came out exactly the way I had envisioned in my head. But it's still beautiful. It Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. really neat. Yeah. It's not one of my favorites that I've attempted, mm -hmm. um, but I like it. Um, there's definitely some... I think this one too, I use citric acid and probably too much because there are... I don't a think lot you can of, use too much. No, you can because the amount of acid that you have in your water, um, that's what causes the dye to strike. Mm -hmm. So it, the more acid it's going to oh, strike, strike faster in some places faster. instead of giving it an opportunity to like... Correct. I see. Correct. So, so you have some whiter spots on those. Yeah. I see. Yep. Um, so that, Which that's a technique in itself too, probably. Yeah. Figuring out your um, yeah. acid, the amount of acid that you want like... I've watched Fiber for the People, and she uses a pH. Um, like litmus thing. paper? No, she – well, yeah, but she also got a tool that you just put in the water. And for certain um, colorways, she has a very specific pH that she wants. Oh. So she brings it back down with baking soda. She's a very talented So then dyer. bring it back up. Yeah, Her These yarn does not last long in her shops, I tell you that. And then – I dyed up three of these. They're a mess, but blues. So I have three. Of I these love on these colors. Fingering weight. So this one is very tonal. Again, some light to really like vibrant blue down here and on the back. These are such a mess still, though. I have to figure them out. I had a lot of trouble with this dye staying. It kept bleeding, but I was using vinegar, so. Um, and that's your older dyes, right? That you had gotten that, or that I, I don't got remember, you? to be honest. But yeah, so I did three of these blues, and then you I just rescan them. Yeah, and see if that helps. Um, and then I have three. Well, I did three of these, but I'm keeping one. I already caked it up. This is very autumn. Yes, like a burnt orange, mm -hmm. some yellow, some like dark, dirty green in it, almost. Dark, dirty green. Yeah. So you got some of it up here too. So, yeah. They're actually pretty. They're gorgeous. Similar. Yeah, but they're gorgeous. So yeah, I have a skein that I caked up for myself. How I'm probably fun. gonna do a sock head hat with it. Oh, good idea. And see. So, and then I have. I'm gonna do some either today or tomorrow. I'm, I'm planning on messing with some green and some gray, uh -huh. and making. A tonal out of it, just one skein on mm -hmm. probably DK. So what I may, what I'm thinking about doing, because obviously I can't keep all this yarn, is we're gonna look into opening up an Etsy shop and then like these one of a kinds, posting them on Etsy. Would you guys be interested? See if anybody's interested in buying them because I'm enjoying it so much that I want to keep doing it, but I can't keep all this yarn. Yeah, and I don't intend to do like an indie dyer like become an indie dyer type of right. thing but it's just another part of the process that i've really enjoyed so um i like messing around with colors and see seeing what i can come up with like that gr the gray green i know exactly how to repeat that i'm probably going to try it again because i want a skein for myself um so yeah i think we're gonna we're gonna look into that so yeah let us know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Um, and then once and then, we get things going, we'll we'll let you know. We have some interesting things maybe on the horizon. Who knows? And so that's it for yarn that I dyed. So let's talk about some break in the bank. Break in the bank. Why don't you talk about this? Because you, you I have bought three these. things that I bought. Okay. So first things first is I saw this color on Instagram. Um, she's one of our favorite dyers. Yes. And I saw the color and I was like, I have to have it. So I signed up for a club. I don't know that I'm going to continue because I don't know what the future colors are going to be. But the color is based on this picture. Oops, sorry. I hit the mic. And now I have the hiccups. And 
Here is the colorway. This is from Savvy Skeins. Ugh. It is on her Sensible Sock. The colorway is called Barn Owl. It's a 420 yards. It's an 80-20 blend. So 80 super wash. Merino, 20 nylon. And here is the color. It's gorgeous. This is beautiful. I love it. So good. Love everything about this skein. Love the speckles back here of the like brown and black. Yeah, and look gray. at the speckling on on the actual picture. Like, what? So good. Yeah. Really cool. So I was really really happy and excited mm-hmm. to get this. Um, I wonder who did that picture. I don't know, but it's a good picture. It is a good picture. And then it. this it came from Lolo Did It. This is my Downton Abbey club upstairs oh my and gosh. downstairs i watched downton abbey with you you did watch one episode i did or two one 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 so this is um this is about daisy and william's love story here is let's take these out it's they're they're really cool colors actually so this is william the mini that came with it that got, i love that this is a it's reading blue. It's like royal, like a royal purple almost. Yeah, it's much more purple in person. Yeah. And then this is War Widow. It's a really nice, um, like if you look at them together, it reads blue here. Like it's reading mm-hmm. navy now with the purple. So we have purple and some white and black and some like magenta pink tones here. Really, really pretty. This is an 80, I think this is 8515 because it's super soft. Yeah, 8515. I love her base actually because she used that yeah. same base, I think, for the Dumbledore Club. No, right? Dumbledore was 8020. Are you sure? I thought it was yeah. 8515. No, Dumbledore's not. I don't think Dumbledore was as soft as this. No? No. Oh. But yeah. And then my last purchase came from Lila Styles, guys. Yes. So I was. I favored yeah, a lot of the... five fifteen. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of the shops that we talk about, I favor the shops. And then... <gasps> oh, um, I want to talk about another shop. I go and I look at their stuff. I check um, the updates tab on Etsy all the time on the yeah. app and see what shops that we favorited that have um, updates. So I saw that Lila Styles This room is it. such a mess. I'm sorry to cut you off, but holy cow. Um, I saw that Lila Styles shop had an update so i went and looked and then i saw this and this led me to my purchase i love all of her stuff because she does really like geeky star wars um harry potter stuff so that's right up my alley but then i saw this and i was like this (sighs) and then i saw one section of it and it's what sold me so i'm easily swayed so i got um a cake koozie right gray's anatomy And then it says, dance it out. I saw the words dance it out. And I was like, oh, I have to. I really miss Christina. Um, This is one of my favorite shows. Um, We are behind a season. And a half. About. We stopped watching mid-season last season. Um, Because yarn. Yeah, because yarn. But I love it. And then I saw 007. I was like, oh, George O'Malley. Oh, and it has McDreamy on it. And it has Meredith and Christina, so I loved it. So I purchased this one, and then I got purchased the platform nine and three quarters because how could you not? Yes. And then I purchased the Patronus one. So I thought this was fantastic because as Moaning Myrtle, as Harry, as Dobby, the Chocolate Frog, the Gryffindor, like everything great about mm-hmm. it. So, and then. Um, I think then it was this one. Hello, Star Wars. Luke Leia. Oh, hey, Han. How you doing, Chewie? I think it's got all of them in there. Yeah, it has um, Yoda. It has Mm -hmm. Padme. Does it have? It has some Ewoks, which I swear Tarquin is part Ewok. Oh, totally. Rey. Oh, it has Obi-Wan, Jar Jar, uh, BB-8. BB-8 has my heart. He does. And then she was so generous, she sent two additional ones. Look at these. 
Oh so gosh, cute. And it's got the I... Chewbacca bandolier. It has Chewbacca. That's Chewbacca. Yeah. So cute. Like, look. What? And then... This one I love. Dobby. Another one who stole my heart. He did steal my heart. Poor Dobby. And with it came some fun stickers. I love this sticker. This one's great. It's I a love great it. sticker. And... Save Dobby. Adorable. So, great purchase. I've never used one, so I'm excited to try one. So, this and is the concept, if you all don't know what they are. This is a large caked skein of yarn already. Um, but you put the, the, yarn. Uh, the, the yarn, yarn inside these little... And it keeps its form. It keeps, yeah, shape. so as you pull from the center... It doesn't get all crap. Yeah, it doesn't get all funkadelic. Um, and that's everything that i've purchased in the last two weeks yeah and then we have this not yarn related i just thought it was really funny <laughs> so i'm gonna show it yeah please anyway so um i was downstairs when you were talking about the ikea trip so i'm not quite sure what you talked about but i didn't we, say everything that we bought so you did get this i forgot about that for yeah. your um storage yeah i got this little like bag for three dollars um that i'm gonna keep like all my needles and stuff in and probably like my notions just to try to be a little more organized. I don't know. It probably won't happen, guys. It, this may just stay somewhere, but I thought it was cute. I like gray and yellow. Yeah. Um, and how could you go wrong for $2.99? Totally. Speaking of how you cannot go wrong, we love our IKEA bags. We use them. I talked about how we got some of them. We use them for groceries and laundry. Yeah. So in addition to getting some smaller size bags... How are you doing? <laughs> so, they have IKEA hats. Hats now made out of the fabric. And when we were there, did you talk about the lady? No, I didn't. The weird lady. She was not. She weird. was not weird. No, no, no. She was just very passionate about the IKEA bags. Very passionate. So she was very excited about these the hat. hats, and yeah. she bought quite a few of them. And I was like, oh, okay, that's so funny. How funny? And then she kind of kind of conv convinced me to get one. I don't know that there was much convincing to be had. No, because, come on. And it's, then. It's a, it's a hat bag. So, but then yesterday, it was raining here, right? It was. And Ray says, oh, I need an umbrella. I was we like, don't just own go an umbrella. Your, I was like, just go get your Ikea hat bag. Your Ikea bag. Hat. Hat bag. Your Ikea it. hat bag. Because it's waterproof. You'll be fine. And but he this would be good it. to go out gardening. When Absolutely I go cut the not. when I cut the grass, keep the sun out of my eyes. <laughs> I would love. All right, you do that tomorrow when you go. We'll work do on together. The front yard. We'll, I'll hold your hand and we'll go walk <laughs> up and down the street. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I so can't. I just thought it was funny. It's one of those like jokey things. I think it was only like two dollars. Yeah, but, but the ba their bags are great. Their bags are good. To I love their yeah. um, the IKEA bags. They're huge and they're only a dollar. I think when you buy um, the big bags, but. So that is that. Let's talk about um, what we've been reading and watching. Sure. So watching, there's quite a bit. Um, one of them is from, we forgot to mention it in the last episode. Yeah. So let's start with that. Okay. We had watched the movie Hustlers with um, Jennifer Lopez mm -hmm. and Candace, I think it's Wu. Candace Wu? Yeah, she's from um, Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, yeah. Yes. Super good movie. It was. I, really I thought it was good, it. too. Um, I, I like, thought Jennifer Lopez was good in it. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez what? looked phenomenal. She's like 50? Yes. She looked like she was she, like... 30. Yeah. Amazing. Like, what? I can't Holy even look cow. Her. She is something else. But I thought the story like was great. The acting in it was really good. Um, it also had Haley... I want to say her name's Ryan Hart. She's from... That show that's on CW... Archie with Archie and them. Remember oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that show? Um, Riverdale. 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 Mm -hmm. um, she was in it. Cardi B was in it for a little bit. Usher it, made it, an it, appearance. It was. It's a movie about. Um, I think it's strippers. based on a true story. It is. It's based on. Um, so they're strippers and what they did once the market crashed and how they kind of flipped the tables on men and yeah. what they did like. It is I mean, it's pretty story. bad. They it is bad. They drugged these people and stole their money, basically. <laughs> That's what they did. True. Um, <laughs> facts. Right. But it was a really good movie. It really um, was. I enjoyed it. And yeah. then... Recommend. 
I recently watched the movie Chef with John Favreau and um, Sophia Farga from Modern Family, and it, had, it was good. It was a really good movie. Yeah. Um, it was like a happy-go-lucky movie. You need those every once in a while. I wish I had he watched it. He is a chef, and things just kind of went to crap, and he decided to start a food truck, and it was about that, and then his relationship with his son, um, his ex-wife. So just a really good, I thought, Nice little story. I, I will yeah. probably watch that again. I may buy it um, from oh, yeah? Apple TV because I, I did that enjoy good, huh? it and I, I would probably watch it okay. m- multiple times. Okay. Um, and then I've watched, I mentioned this last time, I finished season one of Teen Wolf and I finished season two. So I started season three, but I didn't get very far. I think I stopped actually mid episode one. And then together we finished season two of A Discovery of Witches. Which I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed probably season two more than I did season one. I thought that with season two, they things were out of order. Yes. Um, but in the bigger picture of what they showed and what they covered in the books and what yeah. they showed, almost all the major things happened. All, almost all the major events, if not all of them. It showed some of the background stuff that kind of you would infer happened in the books. Yes. Right? But Mm -hmm. you see it in the television show. So it gives you a bigger picture. Um, And I've gone on the record to say that I did not like Marcus's casting. However, in this one... It actually explains something, which I feel so stupid that I wouldn't have thought of before. So one of my issues with the character Marcus in the first season was that he is, when you meet Marcus in the books, Marcus is from California. He's blonde hair, wears this shell necklace, has another necklace with all these little charms on it. And he's easygoing and blah, blah, blah. So I American swagger. Right. So I just envision Marcus like a surfer right Mm -hmm. so not speaking like a surfer either not being like what but just that that like that that persona chill mentality right so i just had this cowabunga dude and then you watch season one and he has a british accent and i should have picked up on this reading his book after he becomes a vampire he lives in europe correct for a very long time for hundreds of years. Yeah. So why would it have surprised me that he picked up a British accent? Correct. So for some reason in, in this um, season two, it just mm-hmm. kind of made sense. I was like, okay. And he's it. a cutie patootie, the actor, in some of these scenes, I thought. Mm, maybe. Yeah. You like Marcus. I like... Um, I do like Kit. I thought Kit was adorable. He's crazy in the show, don't get me wrong. But I think he's a good looking actor. No. I mean, he's not like... He, not like you're going to throw him overboard. No, I wouldn't throw him overboard. <laughs> but um, but I I agree with you. I think I I loved, I actually loved this season. Yeah. Because of the what was happening in the modern times. Yeah. You know, yeah. book two is all about Diana and Matthew and her finding herself and her her powers and you know the book and blah 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 blah. But we do we infer a lot of we're supposed to infer a lot of what happened during that year period right. in the modern world and this I feel like this season showed it all so it showed you know when they come back spoiler alert for those of you who haven't read the books but it's been out for a very long time um, when they come back from the past Marcus and Phoebe are like already together they're talking about turning her into a vampire getting married you know like or whatever. Um, you know, poor. We we learn a little bit about um, her aunts, her aunts, and you know, doing some of the dark magic, but we don't know all the details. Like this showed all of that yeah, stuff, it, and I thought that was really cool. And I really liked, and I think I said this before about the first season, is when they go to. Um, oh shoot! What the heck's the name of it? The the, the, the covenant. No. The, oh, uh, the island. That the island. island. What's yeah. the name of the island? I don't remember that. Me neither. But we never like a lot of a lot of the the series, the TV series, t- 
takes place on that island and you get a, f- a feeling that it's not just a place to go to hold a meeting. Yeah. Like there's actual things to do. Right, right. Because yeah. they, again, they infer that in the books about that there's a big library there and there's yeah. all these different sections. But you have that feeling also that like they only go there when they need to meet in a giant group. Correct. Um, which is not the case. So it was cool. I like those aspects of things there. Um, so I think they could have taken a lot of liberties, which they did take a lot they of did. liberties. But it Especially was, with the modern. I thought it was just done incredibly well. Yeah. There. You know, I missed a lot of things in the second book. I really enjoyed it. The more and more I read it, because the second book is not a lot of people's favorites. Correct. If you don't read it, you know, often enough, you just like a one and done kind of thing. You're like, what was that? It was a lot. It, it gets better every time. It does. And I, I, I missed the interaction with the queen. I think they they did not establish that the queen and Matthew had a history, which I really liked seeing that in the books. No, they, they did. But... Towards the end, you didn't really get a chance. Like he, you know... They did. They they did mm. what they could. Yeah. No, um, I get it. I totally get like, it. Like, it could have been, if they had a huge budget, they, it could have been so much grander. Yeah. There were so many scenes in the book um, that had huge crowds of people where yeah. in like the, the wedding. TV show, it was like five people. Yeah. You know? So so they definitely had to mm-hmm. make some adjustments. But I mm-hmm. thought, I just thought it was done so well. Yeah. And it gets the point across of that second book really well. Yeah. I just um, feel bad because they did leave out some, like, my favorite parts of the books. Well, so I didn't the see first any season, of my favorite parts. I mean, the first season left out the yoga scene, which is one of my favorite scenes ever. But it doesn't translate. I like the whole... It's not going to translate well to I know, television. Not. And a lot of the stuff yeah. that happens in that second book isn't going to translate well to television. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have to quicken it up yeah book two's long book two's it, long it's There's very a lot long. of stuff it's very long but i like that i i found that i like the the growth i like reading about growth a character's growth like for example when diana goes to septors and she you know and um philippe is just like hard well, on her at first yeah. and she's learning how to how to manage the household she's learning how to speak different languages because they i mean i'm sure it was difficult to address in the tv series but at the start of the book she doesn't fit in. She comes from modern day, you know, right. times back into Elizabethan England. England, right. And even though we can understand a British accent or an English accent, some of the words that they use different is different. The inflections are different. I liked that stuff. And I liked learning about her growing and it, then finally feeling like she's ready to fly that nest when Philip was like, I've been conversing with you in three different languages and you've been conversing back right. you know, no issues and now she's like ready to go off on her own I like stuff like that it would have had to be a 22 episode season in order totally. for them to get which I wouldn't have been mad at because I always thought it was good <laughs> no but the production company who's doing it is a newer production company so they definitely wouldn't have had the funds and because it's made I don't know I wonder like I think here in the US a lot of our television series are 22 episodes give or take a few I don't know if that's typical in other countries mm. Because if you think of things that we've watched that are Canadian-based shows, they're not. Like Lost Girl. Um, that was a great show, too. Right? That wasn't 22 episodes per season. So I think that's what we also have to look right. at, is that TV in other countries and productions in other countries are very different than sure. we have. So We also have I a think, pandemic going around, too. Well, so, that, too. Yeah. Um, all right. So that was The Discovery of Witches. And then last thing is, we watched the first episode of... The Falcon and the Winter Soldier we did last night, and it was a very good. I thought it was um, good too. I'm interested to see where they go with it. You didn't get much of an idea of where they're taking it, like, but you kind of got some glimpses. Mm-hmm. I love, yeah, I, I liked it too, and and I I love that they, I love that they're using the actors that they use in the films. Well, they would have to. No, but not really, because like, how many times do they redo like a Superman or something, and it's a different but actor and it's a different. It's the same universe, so in order yeah. for them to stay in the same universe, they have to do that. I know. I love. I just. I thought it was good too. I think it has a lot of potential. The special effects were great. Yeah. I felt like they were movie quality. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. For sure. Um. So I'll be interested to see where that one goes. And then lastly, um, because we should, we're almost at an hour and forty-five minutes. We should start wrapping. We this are. Up. Yeah. We just talk. We spent a lot of time on our sweater, though. Um, so for books, I finished In the Darkness, and I read Thicker Than Blood. That is the Zoe Bentley series by Max Omir. I or not Max Mike. Sorry, Mike. You didn't like Mike? No, I like. I loved the series. I thought it was done incredibly well. Three books, murder mysteries. Um, 
the same serial killer is in all three books. Mm-hmm. So by the end, you know, things are pretty get wrapped up. Um, so I, I might read more of his books. I'm not sure. but Okay. Um, it's I nice to find a new author. And then I started Six of Crows by Lee Bardigo, which is part of the Grishaverse. And I'm trying to read the two books in this separate series in that same universe before the show comes out next month. Because there are characters from these two books in the TV show. Because I don't know if the timelines of the books match. Okay. So um, I'm only like a couple chapters in. So far, it's... The names are very hard in this book. Like, the I don't... You know how, like, you read a name and all of a sudden you're just making stuff up? Yes. And I've made up I've made up a lot of names because I have no idea how to pronounce them. But yeah, that's what I'm reading. Great. I finished... Uh, I always get these confused. Court of... A Court of Mist... And Fury. And Fury. How do you know that? Did you write it down? No. Thank you. I finished A Court of Mist and Fury. Wow. I love, I loved it. I And, you know, people were saying, like, the first book was, was great. Second was, like, their favorite. This one was my favorite. This one was really cool. That was um, the second book? This is the third book. Oh, that, oh, I thought you were talking, okay. You yeah, finished so that last night. I did. I finished that last night, and um, I thought it was really cool how, you know, like, there's a happy ending, but not a happy ending. Um yes. I, I, like I kind of like that a lot, but it did tie things up, but it left things open, which I know that there's more books. And I actually started reading the fourth book um, last night, which is kind of like a novella. It's apparently it's it's shorter. It was almost oh. set for like a filler bef- be- before the next book. So not much is not much happens. I read some reviews last night because I was like, why did this book get so many less reviews than the mm. other ones? And people were just saying that that like it's just it's kind of like filler material. There's not many, not much plot advancement in this, but um, it's perfect for me though because I kind of I'm ready for that, you know that that chill. Don't really necessarily yes. need to like advance the plot. Tell me what's going on with the characters. That's why I like my like I go to a one of my gay novellas yeah. because I need that again a palate cleanser mm-hmm. and just something that's an easy read. Yeah. And um and because I've been reading these back to back to back, it's it's gonna be a nice transition. It's not like and I, I can see why people would have said that it was kind of a disappointment if you read each book when they came out, because mm-hmm. it's like, did I really wait a year for nothing really to happen and for a book that's half the length? Gotcha. For me it's gonna be a great experience, I think. Um and that's that's called a court of glass and something else. Oh, that's the crochet those crochet hooks. Um, and that's kind of where I'm excited for the book Six of Crows. Uh, the two books in this series got amazing feedback from readers. They really like it. They think it's better than the first three books. Oh, really? Um, the Shadow and Bone collection. So I'm interested to see if I feel the same once I'm done. Okay. This is A Court of Frost and Starlight. Is um, the book you're reading now? Is the book that I'm reading now. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, and I think there's, I think there's just one more after this. Okay, I'm not quite sure. Or there's another or spinoff or something, which I may not read the spinoff, but it's been highly enjoyable. And I know people were just, I guess, a little bit uncomfortable sometimes with some of the, like the sex scenes and stuff. Oh, oh no! But um, have those. it wasn't really bad. All right. I well, only blushed once or twice. I think that's everything. We covered really? a lot. So, we did cover a um, lot. This is actually a little bit longer than we're, we've been going. So um, if you're still here, thank you so much. Well, yeah, thanks for thanks for hanging out. I, did, I forgot to release you during our um, acquisition yeah. phase. But so, I'm glad that you hung out if you did. Yeah, so if you stuck around this long, guys, thank you so much. Uh, we oh, appreciate I to, it. I wanted to mention one more Etsy shop. Which one? I wanted to talk about Whatnot. Um, oh, this well, is Kathy from... We love Kathy. We totally love Kathy from the Whatnot podcast. You should also watch her podcast. You totally should. So I was, um, to Kevin's point, like what that reminded me when you were save Etsy shops and see about, um, you know, their updates. I had just randomly the other day gone to her Etsy shop and she has so many amazing things. There's yarn. There's, she's got some sock blanks on there. She's selling a couple of her shawls that she put together. Um, She's got a ton of stitch markers and progress keepers. She's got some yarn bowls as well, like the the cloth um, rope bowls. 
Um, so I just wanted to mention that because I was so surprised at how much stuff she had in her shop. So um, so give her a check if you haven't already. She's from Australia. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Very Thanks. Good. That's why I'm, I'm glad I got that out. So, um, guys, th- again, thank you. Thank uh, you. We appreciate y'all for hanging out, chatting. Yeah. Um, we will do this again in a fortnight. Mm-hmm. So until then, I um, hope you guys stay safe, enjoy your crafting, and um, enjoy some good weather yeah. if you're getting it. Make sure you try to knit with those nine-inch circular needles whenever you can. Goodbye. Bye, guys.